Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. We are happy to have you with us. Look who else is with us. Zach is back. He's back. I am. He, he'd been gone? Yeah. <laughs> I, he's I, one of our friends, and well, we missed him. Well, he's always been one of we our friends, him. but... He was not with us. Well, where, where were you? Well, that would take a whole show to document where I've been, but it has been quite a while. <laughs> I, I'm kind of missing these red chairs. You were creating spice racks, I hear. I, I had built a spice rack <laughs> in recent times, yes. <laughs> Just get, uh, it took him weeks and weeks, doing that. he was not able to join us on the show. <laughs> Glad to be back, though. <laughs> Well, we are happy to have Zach back. We are happy to have you here with us for the next 30 minutes on this lovely October week. The leaves are changing. The mm. air is getting crisp. And this week we're taking a trip to Japan. I didn't bring my passport. We'll smuggle you in. <laughs> that might be illegal and highly not good. He's we'll, going to be stuck in immigration. We'll give you a Japanese Kit Kat while you wait. I've had those. They're nothing to write home about. <laughs> He had the green tea one, I think. I thought the green tea was the best one. <laughs> I didn't get to try the green tea. I did tea. not enjoy the green tea. I did have a cheesecake Kit Kat straight from Japan. That was not bad. Straight from Japan? Straight from Japan. They have it specialty cheesecake there. Yeah. yeah. I had the uh, cookies and cream, and that was wonderful. Did you know that there are different kinds of Kit Kats in, from, in Japan? Apparently, there's something like 25 different flavors. Kayla told me 200. Was she 200. exaggerating? <laughs> she said 200. Well, coming up on today's show, we do have an interview with Kayla Lane, who actually took two recent mission trips to Japan. Also on today's show, a special feature on Macomb volleyball player Jenna Huffman, plus a special invitation to all of you in the ministry. So stay tuned to find out more. Looking forward to that. We have something special when it comes to glass bottles. Yeah. Why is all this here? It's yeah. not for Zach's spice rack. I, th I thought they were my coming back gift. Oh, my, my. would you like? Uh, would you like some orange, orange crush? crush one? This bottle here, this. Well, Andy, you want to hold that up? The original two liter. This right? is <laughs> orange crush. So I'm a big orange crush fan. This Are got really? me excited. Yeah, this is a, a giant bottle. There's not orange crush in it. No, it's, but it, originally it's been. It would be pretty flat, I think. <laughs> That's decades old. Lots of bottles. More on that in a moment. But first, we have today's scripture. Mark has it for us. Mark comes from Revelation 15, verses 1 and 3. It actually refers to glass in this, patch, in this passage. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what I looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses, end of the Lamb. So Revelation talking about the ultimate victory, the mm. ultimate celebration mm. of victory over the devil. Mm. What a time that will be too. I also wanted to mention that I think that there's going to be a lot of orange crush in heaven at that time of victory. So I'm pretty excited. Thanks for bringing it back to earth here, Zach. I appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't see that in Revelation, but you know, maybe <laughs> I read a different, different uh, uh, version might, might have that in yeah. there. So you're a pre-crushalist and <laughs> not a post-crush. Like something, yeah. We'll discuss theology later. Thank you. <laughs> well, we want to take a moment to feature something unique, and you might even call it a bit historic. Coming up, October 18th is the Finley Bottle Show, and the advertisements say it's going to be bigger and better than ever. Marianne Dow is one of the organizers of the show and lent us some unique and interesting bottles. Guys, let's take a moment and take a look walk in history past as yeah. we see these bottles that were once used for everyday use. Well, I think some of the things that's interesting is you, the, you have a variety of bottles here, not only in terms of, of shape and of function, but also in terms of geography. I mean, we've got bottles yeah. from, hmm. from Texas, from California, but also some from Delphus in, in Lima as well. Yeah, one of those milk bottles is actually from, from Delphus. And the Lincoln you know? Highway Milk Company? or Dairy Company. Dairy yeah. Company. How about oh, wow. that? Yeah. Back I got a guitar here. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> sure. Is that a guitar or a or violin a or a bass or a cello? Cello. I wonder what we know. It's in a string in family. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to know what was. In Jennifer's there. is interesting. You're holding one there, and we could not stand it up because it's got a round bottom. That's right. This is a ginger ale bottle. Huh. It'd be neat if there were some dates on here, but it is. It's a round bottom. It's blue, and it's very heavy. I mean, it's hmm. it's uh, it's a thick piece of glass. Like, is this is that a piece of glass? Yeah, that's glass. It's, it's not a plastic. One piece the glass, of glass bottle come, uh, festival. My glass <laughs> lack of knowledge is coming out now. How about this one? Magic Invisible Cement. Need some of that? Maybe stuff. it's well, still in there. That's if actually what invisible. I used to hold my spice rack together that I recently built. <laughs> is it working? 
Well, it hasn't fallen apart yet, so. It's magic. Yeah. There will be free appraisals <laughs> at the show. Public is invited to bring in their old bottles as well to, to get some sort of idea of maybe hmm. how much your collection could be worth. Our chief engineer, Jeff Klingler, is a glass jar collector. He says this show is filled with not just glass bottles, but antiques and other very unique items. It's a place to <laughs> buy and sell. Or to just come and look, but don't break anything. That's right. That's right. Very we are being very careful with these items. Every time we pull one out, I actually did kind of drop one of those you broke shakers. One? It didn't break. Ooh, no, it was just there was the a salt shaker, and all over the place. <laughs> it's all okay. It's all it's all okay. I'm gonna tell Marianne. All right. The details are the Finley Bottle Show is taking place October 18th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Admission is only $2 and kids 12 and under are free. However, if you want to get in early, you can pay $10 for the early admission price and get in at 7 a.m. Bottles, fruit jars, milk, medicines, inks, uh, sodas, advertising, and much more. It's at the Sterling Center on Route 12 in Finley. 4570 Fostoria Avenue is the address. And this is the 39th year and it looks like it's going to be quite a fun event taking place there on October 18th. So be sure to check it out. Well, not far from Finley is the village of Macomb, and that's where we find the feature for today's Faith on the Field segment. Here's Matt Finkel with more. Thank you, Zach. Well, the Macomb volleyball team has been outstanding in recent years, reaching the regional finals three years ago, the state semifinals two years ago, and then the state finals last year. And this year, they've picked up right where they left off, and senior Jenna Huffman has been a leader on the team for her whole career. Capping off her senior year with a state title would fulfill a lifelong dream. I remember being a little girl, being the ball girl for this team, and just always our goal is to get to stay, our goal is to win state. And I've gotten one step closer each one of my years, so it would just be like the icing on the cake to be able just to come away with a win. She hates to lose, you know, and that's the biggest thing is she just, you know, she wants to win. And she'll do whatever it takes and, you know, and motivate the kids to do whatever it takes. She pretty much does whatever she wants. Serves well, plays great defense, hits the crap out of the ball and blocks well. So it's no surprise that Huffman leads the Lady Panthers in just about every statistic. But she credits those around her for her success. This year's team returns everyone from last year's group that only lost one match all season, not coming in the state finals. We just know each other so well. We know each other's tendencies. And it just means a lot to be able to, you know, have this one last chance uh, to do it with these girls who I've grown up with all the way through elementary and junior high. If you watch her, she's the leader. You know, I mean, the kids look to her to, when we're struggling, they look for her to pull us out. It's the way Jenna is. Teamwork is everything and that you have to rely on your team, teammates just to step up when you're having an off game and you have to be able to step up when your teammates are having a rough game. Jenna is not just a leader on the court, but off it as well. She helps head up Macomb's Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and her faith is a big part of her everyday life. Oh, it's so important to me. I mean, my sophomore year, I became a leader, and it's really just been one of the most uh, things that have helped me grow in my faith throughout high school. Um, it's always just a sounding board. We have good mentors. It's just a great community of people. When you're a leader at FCA, you have to push your faith that much further just to be able to help other kids out. Once high school concludes, Jenna will continue her volleyball career at Tiffin University. We had a little bit of contact with Finley and then I visited Ohio Dominican. But um, Tiffin, I knew their coach already. Their assistant coach was my club coach um, last year. So I was just familiar and it's close to home and they just have a really good atmosphere and a really good campus. She's a next level player. I mean, she, you know, she could have probably played D1 pretty a lot of places, but she wanted to stay closer to home and stuff. So and Tiffin's a nice program. A lot of friends there for her. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how Jenna finishes out her high school career and the rest of the Lady Panthers this season. Well, from Macomb to Elida, this next feature story focuses on an Elida graduate who recently found herself halfway around the world. Jennifer has more. Thank you for being with us, Kayla. Thanks, Jennifer. You are a film production graduate from Huntington University. You've been doing the television and film work since about 2009, 2010. So you've got a lot of experience already. <laughs> but we want to talk today about how God has using your talents in some very special ways from some mission trips that you recently got to do. You know, we hear about mission trips a lot. Um, I think mission trips are great. A lot of construction mission trips, a lot of let's go work in churches. But your mission trips have been a little different, haven't they? Yes. Uh, my mission trips are mainly fo focused on 
taking the gospel and filming it and bringing it to life in that sort of way. So we're not going in and building houses or feeding hungry, which I feel like is very important. You're right, right. But at the same time, um, I've been able to travel to Japan and take the gospel and visualize it. Go ahead and tell me about your first trip to Japan. How did it come about? What led you up to it? And then what happened when you got there? My first trip started back in January and I got asked in December. And it was right around the time where I declined a trip to California, an internship in California. And that had always been my dream to go. And, but something felt off about it and I just felt like God was telling me not to go. And obviously, I was excited that God was telling me not to go, but there's still that disappointment of, well, what do I do now? Like, I've always wanted to do that and go there and what, like, what do you have for me now? And then this trip to Japan came along and it was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna go to Japan. That was never a trip that I, or a place that I wanted to visit or a culture that ever struck my interest or anything like that. And I was like, immediately said no and talked to my friends and family and uh, mentors, I was like, no, you should go. Like, we think this is what it, what you're called to do. And I was like, okay, I guess. I ended up going and we filmed three different um, traditional Japanese rituals. And um, I just fell in love with it. And when I came back, I just knew that I had to go back. There was something else that God had for me there that I didn't get or it wasn't ready for me at that time. And I tried everything that I could to go back and I was thankful enough allowed to again. And this second trip was kind of a little different. I was going by myself and meeting up with a group of people. And it was a group of people that I have never met before. But the guy that had asked me was the head leader of my first trip. So I was kind of an honorary missionary um, member of their organization. So you, you filmed the special rituals the first trip. Mm -hmm. um, what types of things did you do in the second trip? The second we focused more on individuals and the issues that they have in the culture. So the first trip was the culture in general looking through a spiritual side and how Japanese like um, kind of, I don't want to say combining uh, Christianity with their beliefs, but kind of like in that sense where they're taking the gospel and adding it into their tea ceremonies and taking their basic traditions and adding the gospel into it. And the second trip was focused on how the culture views worth and um, disability and like these personal struggles and focusing more deeper in individuality. Now, every time I talk to anybody who's been on a mission trip, they typically always say, I went over there to help others, but in the end, I found myself being changed. Would you say that that has been the case for you? Oh, for sure. The first trip I was like, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna film and my faith is gonna shine through and I'm gonna change all these lives. And no, it's, it's totally different. And then like you, you go on this trip to have a close relationship with God and have him change you. And like I said, Japan was not in a place that I ever wanted to go. And like God puts you in situations where you're forced to grow and you're forced to change and it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Do you have some scriptures that were impacting to you during this time? Yes. Um, for the first trip, Isaiah 6, 8, if I can find it. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And so the first trip, um, that verse meant a lot coming back because I knew that I wanted to go back again. Then for the second trip, I'm sitting in the airport and I break down and I'm like, I've made a terrible mistake. I shouldn't be going. Like, you picked the wrong person. I'm going by myself. This is not, no. And um, a verse that I ran into as I'm sitting in the airport was Psalms 32.8. And it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in a way in which thou shalt go. I will guide you with my loving eye. And after reading that, then I was like, okay, I'll go. God is giving you confirmation. 
This yeah. time you were by yourself. You were going to meet up with the team, but you weren't really by yourself. Mm -hmm. God was right there with you yes, going along through the whole thing. Yeah. Sometimes I hear people talk about doing things for Christ and they think they have to be a pastor or they think they have to specifically have a job that's got some sort of Christian title along with it. Mm -hmm. But you're a film production person. You know, you, you're in a society that's probably 95% secular because it's the way the trade is. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to see that in that God is using your specific talents to change people's lives for him? I learned through my, like, my trips that you can't share the gospel without figuring out how people are willing to accept it. And here in the Western world, we're very word oriented and we want to talk and we want to share Bible verses and um, all that kind of stuff. In Japan, that's, that's not going to work. So me going to Japan, minus the language barrier, but sharing verses in that context, aren't, it's not going to click and they're not going to want to grab, grasp the gospel. And it's, that country is very scared of religion because of what has happened in the past. And so finding a way to share the gospel in a way that they can understand it, um, that culture is very visual. So taking my skills that I have, even though it's still an American sort of way, and being able to take something out of the gospel and bringing it to life and being able to show it is kind of cool in the sense of I'm meeting them halfway. And the team's meeting them halfway. And it's, there's one Christian TV station that I know of in Japan, and they have hours from like one to six in the morning. And so mm -hmm. it's not a lot, but there, it's, still, it's still there and it's still able to be accessed. And that's kind of cool. So what will happen now with the projects that you were working on? How are those going to be used once they're completed? The first one um, is going to be aired here in the U.S. and in Japan. The other three that we did for my second trip will just be in Japan. And they're, mu they're music videos and they're interviews of personal struggles and stuff like that. And it's all done in Japanese. So it's very fitting for them. So if we take it over here, it's not going to have the same Maybe effect. we'll still have to show it on our <laughs> station. <you know>? Cool. <laughs> So that's so you can know that your work, your work that you did in that time, it's going to continue to resonate with those people mm -hmm. and your talents are going to continue to be a witness, even though you're not there now. Do you intend to go back or what is your, what is your plan for the future? Um, if that opportunity comes, for sure I'll take it. And if it doesn't, then I'll just keep telling people about Japan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kayla Lane. 2011 Elida High School graduate. We're blessed to have her here at TV44 as well, working with us and uh, just an all around incredible vessel for God. Thank you so much, Kayla, for being with us. Thank you. On Faith and Friends, back to you. Well, thank you, Jennifer. You know, there are mission opportunities literally everywhere, both overseas and right here in West Central Ohio. And October is a special month designated to honor those in ministry. You may already be aware it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and that means something very special you're at TV44. That's right. We're teaming with Gifts of Joy Christian Bookstore and WTGN Christian Radio to again present the Pastor's Bre Appreciation Breakfast. This year's date is October 29th and it starts at 8.30 a.m. It's right here in the studios at TV44. It's a catered complete breakfast. There's coffee from Big B and another great speaker provided by Parable Christian Bookstore. There's worship music, free books, and a lot more. So if you're involved in ministry, we encourage you to attend. This is also a great gift. What a great way to encourage and support your pastor and his or her spouse. Tickets are just $10. You can purchase them over the phone or in person at any of the three sponsoring organizations. And stay tuned to TV44. We'll be giving away a pair of tickets as well. It's October 29th, 8.30 a.m. right here at TV44, the annual Pastors Appreciation Breakfast, sponsored by WTGN, Gifts of Joy, and TV44. October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Jennifer recently talked with Dr. Trudy Pieper on important measures women can add to their daily lives. Well, our health topic today is the breasts. Yes, both men and women have them, of course, but women need to pay probably most attention to them since breast cancer is definitely an issue that affects so many people. Dr. Trudy Pieper is joining us to talk about keeping breasts healthy 
preventive, proactive things that can be done to help us prevent some things down the road. Absolutely, and your point about breast cancer is so important here, Jennifer. It is the lead, leading cause of, of breast cancer for women is, for cancer mm. is breast cancer. So we, as women, really need to be thinking about, you know, how can we prevent breast cancer? The best way is making sure that we have our lymphatic system working well. And the lymph glands, um, there are more, there's more fluid in our lymph glands than any place else in mm. our body. And we tend not to think about that. And at, between each cell is a fluid and it's so the lymph is outside of the cells and it acts as a liaison between the cells and the blood. And the lymph manufactures the majority of our white blood cells which fight off all the invaders that come into our body, our viral and bacterial infections. And the lymph, it's really the, the transportation system for waste. Hmm. And it pulls the, the waste out of our body into the blood where it takes it to the liver, the kidneys, and the colon then to get rid of. So a healthy breast depends upon the cleansing action of our lymph system. Anybody who has had a cancer scare or who has dealt with breast cancer has definitely heard about the lymph nodes yes. or any sort of cancer. And my mother is a cancer survivor. And I remember we were praising God back those years ago, knowing that the cancer hadn't gotten into her lymph nodes. So here we have this lymph system that um, doesn't pump like a circulatory system, but yet needs to be needs to be filtered and flushed through. Right, and since we don't have a, a pump like the heart and circulatory, the way we flush that out is the movement is when we move, our lymphs move. So for the best way for you to clean out your lymph system is you have to move your body. Now, a mini tramp is probably the absolute positively best mm -hmm. way. If you're, you're bouncing, mm -hmm. then that moves the lymph through. But there are other ways. Brisk walking four times a week for 20 minutes will create healthier breasts. Drinking plenty of water, six glasses a day will actually help you flush those toxins through your kidneys and get rid of them. Increasing your fiber to at least 20 grams a day will remove the waste through the colon. But interesting enough, you know, women are always thinking about their weight. Right. If you're doing 20 grams of fiber, you're also gonna lose weight. So mm. there's another added benefit <laughs> to making sure you need fiber in your system. Broccoli, which is a cruciferous vegetable, has been found as the number one vegetable to prevent breast cancer. So adding some broccoli at least every week to Does your diet. Does that mean broccoli with cheese sauce or should it just be uh, steamed broccoli it's or raw steam, broccoli? A steamed broccoli, raw broccoli, maybe with a little dip or a little butter on it. But yes, the, you need to keep it in its richest form so the nutrients are still there. And then finally, um, limiting your carbs. Uh, this is one that's really important. I see a lot uh, today with my patients. Um, particularly those with breast cancer, they ate a lot of carbs, mm -hmm. which includes sugar, and mm -hmm. sugar feeds cancer. So women who eat more carbs are twice as likely to get breast cancer wow. than those who do not. Wow. So cut back on your carbs, your pastas, your breads, um, anything that is a carbohydrate, which is a complex carbohydrates, are, are just as bad as simple sugars to do that. And your final one on your list is your favorite. You Everybody hear about knows. it all the time. <laughs> green tea. <laughs> Three glasses of green tea a day will protect against estrogen dominant cancer in mm. your lymph system. That's important. I mean, we hear about green tea for so many important reasons, but that's a real poignant fact that it I is. would think would convince a lot of people, a lot of women, to drink green tea. And the green tea should be used with stevia, a little tiny bit of honey, but again, we want to make it so that you're not. Uh, adding carbs, sugar, mm. to your diet. So try to learn that without sugar in it. All right, so ladies, you heard it. More movement means healthier breasts. Maybe you do have a mini trampoline and you can do some jumping on that every day, but a lot of us don't have one of those. We've got a lot of other very good, easy things to do. Brisk walking, plenty of water, increased fiber, eat your broccoli, limit your carbs, and three glasses of green tea a day. Of course, if you ever have questions about this or want to learn more, you can contact Dr. Trudy Pieper at Phoenix Wellness Center in Johnstown, Ohio. You can look her up online as well at phoenixwellnessforyou.com and there you can see the phone number right on your screen. Dr. Trudy, thank you very much for this very important information. A lot of women out there could definitely use this. I appreciate it very much. My extreme pleasure. Thank you, Jennifer. And back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, if you were here at our TV station right now, you'd see it looks a little more filled up than normal. It's not because of the auction. In fact, we'll show you a picture of it here. The Wiz Quiz set is up. 
and our second week of Wiz Quiz taping underway this week. 32 high school teams taking part once again this year. It's just one of the ways we want to encourage our area youth in a positive way. Now, Zach, you've seen every night of the tournament taping <laughs> so far. Dozens of students, coaches, parents, mm -hmm. and here at CV44 are here for this event. Pretty special. Well, you guys know anytime we have an opportunity to bring local high schoolers into our studios, it's exciting to us because they get to see not only uh, the studio here and, and what they see on Sports Report and things, but they see that we are truly invested in the community. And it's been very neat. We start off by feeding the high schoolers, which I think goes over extremely well all the time. Surprising. Um, yeah, but it's always fun to see. They come very nervous, but by 10, 15 minutes into it, they're all very loose. And they have a great time uh, just doing the quiz bowl here at TV44. So many times students look back uh, as we talk to them once they've graduated from high school or mm -hmm. even from college and they say one of my favorite times was either coming to TV 44 for the choir, <laughs> uh, the soccer show that we host here yeah. in studio, or perhaps even the whiz quiz. Very exciting time for us to, to get to know some of these students that we get to cover throughout the year. You can tune in for the kickoff of the 2015 Fall Whiz Quiz Tournament next Thursday. That's October 22nd at 9 p.m. Take a giveaway time, and we have two promotions going on right now. Two! Yeah, the first is for the magician, uh, Justin Flom. He'll be at the First Assembly of God in Fort Wayne on October 24th. We're giving away two tickets, and they could be yours. Merely enter at faithandfriends.wtow.com and click on Contest. Fill out the form and include the name Justin Flom, that's J-U-S-T-I-N-F-L-O-M, in the notes. and. We'll contact you if you're the lucky winner. Mm -hmm. That's right. The second ticket giveaway is for the upcoming Pastor's Breakfast that we just mentioned. Two tickets to that October 29th breakfast. Again, it's easy to enter. Just go to WTLW.com and click on Faith and Friends, and then click on the Contest tab on the menu. Or you can mail your entry into us here at 44 at 1844 Beatty Road. That's Lima, Ohio, 45807. Two pretty cool opportunities there. Well, this brings us to the close of our show for today, but first one more look at that scripture verse from Revelations chapter 15, verses 1 and 3, which actually refers to glass, as we mentioned earlier. I saw in heaven another great marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass, glowing with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God, and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Certainly a time we all look forward to as believers where we can sing before the Lamb hmm. and be with him up in heaven. Well, for all of our friends here on Faith and Friends, we'll see you next time.